press gang is on its way under orders from the garrison at Dover to take every man they can lay hands upon. Hide, if you love your wives, your freedom. The world is a carousel of color. Disney presents The Wonderful World of Color From Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, we bring you the story of The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh. Now your host, Walt Disney. Books of adventure, suspense, and mystery always have a special appeal for me when they're about real people or based on the life of a real person. Like these books by the English author Russell Thorndike. The hero of all the Thorndike stories is one of the strangest characters who ever lived. A real life Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He lived in England nearly 200 years ago. By day, he was a respected member of his community, and by night, he was the greatest smuggler in the whole country. But like Robin Hood, although he was a thorn in the side of law and order, he was a hero to the ordinary folk of his time. Because whatever he made as a smuggler, he gave away to the poor and the needy. This is where he operated all along this coast here, better known to us today as the White Cliffs of Dover. He was smuggling in cargoes from France, Belgium, and Holland. And in this part of England, even today, they still talk about the Scarecrow's smuggling gang. Now, his nickname came from the disguise he wore. And only two of all the men he led knew who he really was. They wore disguises, too. Something like this. This is called Hellspite, and this one, Curlew. Now, there have been verses and songs written about this Scarecrow leader like the one we have for you now, which sets the stage for our first story. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, the soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow. On the southern coast of England, there's a legend people tell of days long ago when the great Scarecrow would ride from the jaws of hell and laugh <laughs> with a fiendish yell. With his clothes all torn and tattered, through the black of night he'd ride. From the marsh to the coast like a demon ghost, he'd show his face and hide. And he'd laugh <laughs> till he split his side. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. The soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow, 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 Scarecrow. The country folk all loved him just the same. Scarecrow. He would always help the farmer when there was no gold to bring. He'd find a way for the poor to pay the taxes of the king. Scarecrow. Every man would sing. So the king told all his soldiers, hang him high or hang him low. But never return till the day I learn he's gone in flames below. Or you'll hang with a great scarecrow. Scarecrow, scarecrow, scarecrow. scarecrow. The soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow. Country folk all love him just the same. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. Up 
Open away, lads. We'll tweak King George's nose. Hurry, hurry, or I lose the tide. Come on. He gives me the shudders. Do what he says. Keep your eyes stretched and the revenue men will stretch our necks. Nothing from the castle, Scarecrow. All clear. That's the whole cargo, Monsieur Scarecrow. Your payment, Captain. There's nobody hiding in here, sir. We headed them this way. They must be around somewhere. They vanished. What are they, ghosts? No, no, they were real enough, sir. But where the devil are they? Search the place again. should be by now. Light the lantern. It's the reward for your capture thereafter, sir. Not the contraband we landed. Mm. John, give us five minutes start. If you don't hear any shooting, then you two can go on your way. When's our next run? 
Thursday night. The orders will go out tonight. How? By my Lord Bishop's coach. His poor Lordship, how he'd hate it if only he knew. Five minutes, John, remember. Good night, Master John. Good night, sir. Lord. Hmm? I can't understand why you'd allow riffraff like this in your coach. Christian charity knows no social barriers, my dear General. The man seemed ill and tired and asked my help. General Pugh's right, though, my lord. You take chances. And the marsh abounds with the gentlemen at nights. Gentlemen? Well, that's what they call the smugglers in these parts, sir. Pack of scoundrels, I give them gentlemen. Eh? I have my briefing here from the War Office and Customs and Excise. We have plans to smash these gentlemen, my lord. Well, the whole countryside protects them, General. Their friends are everywhere. I don't envy you your task. No, I relish it. The law enforcement's been too slack down here. You'll see a change, I promise you. Those lanterns! Take the card out! And hurry yourselves! The rest of you into the house! Orders. Thursday's our next run, Neds. Fifteen pack ponies and twenty men. No firearms to be carried. Oh, I don't hold with that. The excise men will be armed. Why shouldn't we be? Because if they kill one of us, that ain't murder under the law. But if you kill one of them, you hang. Ah, oh, the skicker's right. Only he goes armed. Except when there's something special on. Yeah, well, he doesn't trust us, that's all. Who says? Well, who's ever even spoken to him? If he trusted us, he'd tell us who he is. With that price on his head? So you can whisper his name in the inn and some other loud mouth can spread the word and put a rope around his neck? Ah, he shares the booty with us equal, don't he? Bless him. We were poor as mice till he came. You too, Ben Davis. Right. The first time in your life that your farm ain't behind with the taxes. And that's his doing. All right, all right. I'm his man like you, aren't I? It's just that I... Ah, <laughs> oh, come on home. Good night, Mother Hathaway. Good night. Good night. Why are we stopping? Huh? We're looking for a... Sir! General, sir! Well, what are you looking for, Sergeant? An escaped prisoner, sir. Convicted for preaching treason. Was to be hanged at Dover in the morning, but he... He got away, sir. Uh, treason? Yeah, an American. From the colonies, my lord. You, there!
Sign of him, Mr. Brackenbury. No, sir. The impertinent rogue. Sergeant, continue the search. Sir. Forward! Men? No. Soldiers. Soldiers out there. They're always having decent people. Oh, lad, you, you're bleeding. Sin? That's a strange name for a vicar, Mother. He has a heart of gold, as Dr. Sin. As mild and gentle as a dove, lad. He won't hand me over to the law. Not if you ask him for sanctuary, he won't. Not Dr. Sin. Say, I sent you. I'll tell you the way to go, to avoid the road. Here you are, vicar. Eggs of brandy, 19 bales of silk. Captain Delacroix. On Thursday, it's the Dutchman's turn to deliver. Uh, doing well, Sexton. Why do you go on taking these chances, Vicar? You're not getting rich on it. And since they don't know, the parish don't thank you. Well, they can live and clothe themselves and their children and pay the taxes in a countryside bled white by the King's Parliament, which represents them, and which buys and sells votes as if they were dealing in cattle. Uh, you can't change the way of the world, Vicar. No? Unjust laws can be altered as well as made by men. There's a new spirit in the world, and it's taxed out of existence, robbed of their independence by the King's government. The people must fight back how they can. Well, men can't beat armies, sir. Ideas can. Faith can move mountains. What we're doing here is just a pinprick, but a thousand pinpricks put together will... Sir. Who are you, stranger? Gently, lips. Dr. Sin. Mother Hathaway sent me, sir. There are troops out searching for me. Why? What have you done? You're an American, are you not? Yes, sir. I've been branded a traitor and sentenced to death for preaching sedition. You should know this because I ask for sanctuary. Sedition? That's what King George calls our wish for freedom and independence. Yes. I can't deny you sanctuary, Mr... Bates. Simon Bates, sir. Mr. Bates. But it would not be safe for either of us to hide you here. You'll give me up? No. Uh, Mips, take him to Mrs. Waggett's Inn. 
Why, Sexton will know what to say to her. She'll hide you till the coast is clear. You say nothing. Then take this, sir. I stole it in my escape. Stole it? Why? I thought to get it to someone hereabouts. Uh, a man I heard about in prison. I think they call him the Scarecrow. It concerns him. I was going to trade it to him in the hope that he'd help me in return. For all I hear, I don't think you'll find him. Many have tried and failed, Mr. Bates. Ah, he's like the devil himself, they say. Riding the marshes like a ghost. He comes and goes, they say. Nobody knows I'll where. I'll deal with or... this if I can, but you must go and quickly. Thank you, sir. And God bless you. Quickly. <laughs> General Pugh, dispatch of troops, subjugate the whole marsh area, whatever means necessary. Well, well. I'm giving you fair warning, Sir Thomas. And if you're justice of the peace in these parts, you want to see justice carried out, mine or any other. And it hasn't been up to now, has it, eh? Mm. Are you telling me my duty, sir? I'm a blunt man. I say what's in my mind. You're the law here, and the law is being flouted. Revolutionaries and smugglers walking the roads. Wasn't I robbed last night not ten miles from here in your district? In your parish, parson? Very well, then. You wait and see my justice. I don't care for your manner, sir. There's a definition of a gentleman that says he's one who never wittingly gives offence. And what do you think of that, sir? Hmm. And my definition of a good soldier, sir, not having had my commission bought for me by a gentlemanly father, but having made my own way in the army, is one who achieves his aim and gets results. And the end justifies the means. Father. General. And what means do you intend to use, sir? My son John, General. You know that everybody has a price, young man. And for the price of freedom from the harrying of my troops, someone will come forward in the end and inform against this smuggling fellow, this scarecrow as he calls himself. And they'll not only be using troops either. What then, General? I must warn you, I'm afraid, that the men of this parish are sturdy, independent folk. They uh, do not frighten easily. And they're women? Women, sir. Women? You'll frighten women? I'll do whatever I think fit to achieve my purpose here. I think the women will talk when they start to lose their menfolk. The Navy needs sailors. And I've asked for the press gangs, whose job it is to get them to come and help themselves here in the King's name, and none too gently. General Pugh! Father, Don't keep no. out of this, Kate. Press gangs, don't dare mention those blackguards in this house. In fact, sir, I've had all your talk I can stomach. Good day to you. Sir Thomas! Well, what have I said wrong? My brother was press-ganged into the Navy, sir. Clubbed, insensible, and dragged away to sea on his 18th birthday. Four years ago. And no word from him since. Now can you understand my father's feelings? I can, Miss Banks, believe me. The Navy needs men and must get them how it can, Mr. Brackenbury. Do you deny that? No, sir. Then hold your tongue. Thank you for your hospitality. If I upset your father, I'm sorry for it, but I'm under orders, and orders are written to be obeyed. Madam, Dr. Sin, Master Banks, good day. Your men of the marshes have asked for rough treatment, and that's what they're going to get. The naval press gangs are on their way. <laughs> farming country, eh? And on a Wednesday, not a man jack to be seen at work. Why not? Come on, lads, step lively. You're in the Royal Navy. Wake up. There's Tim Church spy right ahead. Quick, march!
reason for this special midweek service is this. Having talked with our squire and landlords, Thomas, a two-day public holiday has been declared in honor of the birthday of our beloved King George. Furthermore, <coughs> Vanished like a ghost. The scarecrow. I order every able bodied man to leave the town immediately and hide himself in the marshes. The naval press gang is on its way under orders from the garrison at Dover to take every man they can lay hands upon. Hide, if you love your wives, your freedom. What authority has this man among you to give such orders? Stop! Listen to me! Vicar, stop them! Let it be on their conscience. I command no man. Family lasses, children, and no men, except those with one foot in the grave. You know who we are? Here to press men for King George's Navy. Just a minute, my pretty, where's your man? And yours, and yours, hiding behind your skirts. Well, they're going to come out sometime, and when they do... Leave these people in peace, you loudmouth with your threats. You go beyond the law. Oh, no, I don't. I've got a free hand here from the Navy and General Pew himself to scrag every man jack in this place and that's... enough, you hear? And that's one of you! Any one of you that's living on smuggler's gold comes forward and tells us where we can lay our hands on the man you call the Scarecrow. This is my church, Petty Officer Stubborn. You know me, Reverend? Oh, yes, I've seen you at the Assize Courts when you've offered service aboard ship instead of prison to the the guilty. You'll find no one for your purpose here. You'd best be on your way. Aye, aye, sir. To the inn. We're dropping anchor here a while. A thousand pounds in gold, my pretties. That's the reward for information. It's yours for the getting. Or we'll take your men our way. And it won't be gentle. That's our orders and your choice. You insolent dog! Aye, aye, sir. That's me. Form up! Come back here! Oh, uh, let them go, Sir Thomas. The parson, milk and water, half a man. 
Turn the other cheek. Boy! Follow them. Keep your eyes and ears open to everything they do. So don't you worry. Ah, ah, ah. Come on, what about some more brandy? <laughs> Get out of it! How you can afford to stop brandy like this, missus, as if I didn't know. What do you mean? Friends with a gentleman, eh? Maybe some of them would like to go to sea. Those that don't swing on the end of General Pusey's gallows, eh, lads? <laughs> 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 Touch me, you oaf. Next time, I'll split your head. <laughs> we should have you in the Navy, missus. All right, all right. Let's take it nice and easy, eh, shipmates? Or the ladies liable to clean our chops. So, uh, nice and easy, eh? Good day to one and all. This is Waggett. Mug of ale, missus. You. Will we find some able bodied men in these parts? Oh, there ain't none, sailor. Do you suppose I'd be a widow for two years if there was? You folks is either born old or die young here. Unhealthy place, matey. And it's gonna get unhealthier. When I... Waggett, Mrs. Waggett, come quick. My wife's in labor now. Harry, please. <laughs> well, well. A man at last. Here's one likely lad for the Navy. Run for it, Joe! <laughs> Shipmates, tie him up. We we'll see what we can coax out of him. Go to his wife, missus. Leave this to me. Don't argue. Yes, go to his wife. And tell her she better talk to us if he don't. Or she won't be seeing him for a long, long time. <laughs> you hit him too hard, sailor. You won't get no talking out of him. But I'll talk to you, cos I knows what you want to know. Talking. Close the door, boy. Let's keep it all between friends, eh? You want to know about Scarecrow, don't you? You want to get your hands on him, don't you? Well, better you than me, sailor. Talk, talk. Go on. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope you catch him. I hope you catch him. I haven't always been bent and stunted like this, matey. He done that. He just stared at me. It was like I'd been struck by lightning. I seen him up on the marsh on a big grey horse. When? Where on the marsh? Where he meets his men on Thursday nights, below Gibbet Corner, by the gallows. He's a fiend, sailor. He's a devil. Gibbet Corner, you say? Ah. Thursdays, you say? Ah. Get that, lads. You, you, you won't tell no one I told you, sailor. Or my life won't be worth a tinker's curse. But you'll uh, you'll split a golden pound if you take him, eh? If? There's no if about it, matey. Ah. 
You keep your mouth shut. Oh, aye, 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 shipmate. Aye. I told you to keep your eyes and your ears open. You appear to have opened your mouth as well. The orders have already gone out for the rendezvous at Chibbert Corner tomorrow. They can hardly be changed. Yeah, I was confused, sir. Stubbard had already threatened the lad's wife that unless he talked... Yes. Yes, his wife. That's an added danger. With the newborn baby and her husband already taken, she might well talk. Who can blame her? Well, what are you going to do, sir? I, I don't know yet. First things first. There's a smuggling run tomorrow, and then... You've set me a fine problem. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Well, isn't Mrs. Hadley's problem more important? She's lost her husband. You'd only lose a shipment. Well, don't you care about her? I don't lose my head. I keep it on my shoulders, and I suggest that you do the same. I've got to start using mine now. You informer. Well, we'll all meet tomorrow night, as arranged, at Chibbet Corner. But uh, listen carefully. <laughs> the clipper was right. He is a ghost. It's flesh and blood. And they can bleed. Blindfold them. You'll hang for this, you dog. We're the king's men. The king's vultures, sailor. Bring the powder monkey forward. You, my brave lad, are to be released and led blindfold from here to take this letter to General Pugh at Dover. The other bullies are to remain prisoners here. <coughs> Off you go with him. We'll go too. Ungag the prisoners. You have bread and water. Bread without the weevil bug. Water that is pure. Better than you give the prisoners you drag aboard ship to serve the king. You dog. If I had you and your gang aboard ship, I'd have you beaten till you died. <laughs> I've seen that too. You can shout as much as you like. You're miles from anyone to hear you. Deliver the man Hadley the press gang took to the beach at Smuggler's Cove tonight at 8 o'clock and I will exchange my prisoners for him. Refuse me, and the king's service will be short of six dogs. Does this madman think he can blackmail the crown, the law, me? You seen him? Yes, sir. He's a devil, sir. He'll kill Petty Officer Stubbard for sure, and all of them. Hold your tongue. Take him away. I'll hang three men of Dimchurch for every life this madman takes. That won't bring the press gang back to life, sir. No. And I'm answerable to the Admiralty for the bungling fools. Blackmail and ransom, is it? The king exchanging prisoners with a rogue. Very well, I'll agree. You'll agree, sir? Oh, yes. I'll agree. Why not? <laughs> Sir, do you really think the General will take Joe Hadley there tonight? We'll see. If my signal comes, you'll take your orders from Mips and do your part. Please, take care tonight, sir. General Pugh's no fool. Now, don't worry. You go with Mips and join Sam and the others. There's Mips now. 
with your plan. What do you know of my plan? Only what I heard Mr. Mipps here tell a man at the inn. Loud mouth. Well, it was only Sam and me, Scarecrow, and it's just as well he did overhear us. We need someone to man that boat we've got. There's a revenue cutter lying just off the shore. So I volunteered. But you're not one of my men. No, but I've been cooped up, hidden at that inn for so long, I'm half off my head with boredom. Whoever sails that boat past the cutter to the beach risks a hanging if he's taken. Well, I'm condemned to hang already, so why not me? Sounds fair. Very well, come with me. Sexton, go about your business. You stubborn fool, you'll soon see. You might just as well have talked and saved yourself a beating. Are the other men posted on all the escape routes? Yes, sir. Ah. There must be no mistakes tonight, Mr. Brackenbury. And I want this man, this scarecrow, taken alive. Yes, sir. Untie him. He doesn't need to be bound like that. Well, sir, the general. Untie him. Sir. Covering the sea escape. Now bring it to the wind. Stay full and by. Aye, aye, sir. When the scarecrow delivers the six naval hostages in exchange for the man Hadley, he'll bring an escort, at least as strong. Then we'll take the lot. What if the scarecrow himself doesn't come, sir? We'll hang the men we take publicly tomorrow unless he surrenders himself. Two can play at the blackmail game. <laughs> Tricks, is it, General? Let Hadley go free, or I'll blow your sergeant's brains out. You're free to go, Hadley. Run, man. Hide in the marshes. But, sir... I know what I'm doing. We have him now. Anyway, sir. Blast the contraband. The scoundrel's clear. He tricked us, lied to me. We haven't even got his hostages.
Well, you tricked him, sir. Tricked him? I'm the law. That General Pugh! between the Scarecrow and the King's General Pew. And in this round, the Scarecrow takes on the Crown Prosecutor as well. In just a minute, we'll be back to show you some scenes from this story. Save some space in your graveyard, Parson, for the Scarecrow. Because I swear to you, he'll be there. And soon. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Soldiers of the king feared his name. Next week, the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh continues his campaign against tyranny and the <laughs> king's general, only to find one of his own men turning traitor. Tell me all you know about the Scarecrow smuggling gang. Nobody will know you talk, Ransley, but it's you or them. So what are you going to do now, sir? I'll make an example of Ransley that will teach the others a lesson. They won't forget in a hurry. That's where you come in, John. I was down at the harbour working on my boat, and I heard some men talking about a smuggling run this week. Why, there's, a, there's enough cover there for you to hide your soldiers and catch the Scarecrow's men red-handed. The Scarecrow? Hold your fire! The King's prosecutor was a determined man. Give me the names of the rest of your gang so that I can bring them to trial. I don't know who the Scarecrow is. He'll come forward when we've hanged a few of his men. I have a better plan. One that will teach a lesson to all would-be traitors and to King George's revenue men who offer blood money. Cheat, liar, traitor, convicted by your own words. And this court sentences you to die accordingly. What are you going to do? No, no! <laughs> Be with us next week for a surprising lesson in justice in part two of The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh on Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. So what are you going to do now, sir? I'll make an example of Ransley that will teach the others a lesson they won't forget in a hurry. Mutiny among the Scarecrow's men is a worse danger than the soldiers are. Cheat, liar, traitor, convicted by your own words. And this court sentences you to die accordingly. No, no. <laughs> A carousel of color, wonderful, wonderful color. Walt Disney presents the wonderful world of color.
from Walt Disney's wonderful world of color, more adventures of The Scarecrow of Romney Marsh. And now your host, Walt Disney. On this program, we bring you part two of our story, which has a strange hero with an even stranger name. Sin, S-Y-N, not S-I-N. Dr. Sin, whose alias was the Scarecrow. He was a real life character who lived in England during the reign of King George III, just before the American colonies struggled for independence. At that time, life for the ordinary people of England was hard. Taxation was heavy. There was a great deal of poverty. Our hero here lived a double life, a respectable clergyman by day and a smuggler by night. He became a legend, a hero, and a friend to the poor needy. For years, the King's Army and Navy tried to catch him or to force those who followed him to reveal his identity. In our story, you'll see how this strange man, the Scarecrow, matched his wits against all the King's horses and all the King's men. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, the soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow, on the southern coast of England, there's a legend people tell of days long ago when the great Scarecrow would ride from the jaws of hell and laugh <laughs> with a fiendish yell. With his clothes all torn and tattered, through the black of night he'd ride. From the marsh to the coast like a demon ghost, he'd show his face, then hide. And he'd laugh till he split his side. So the king told all his soldiers, hang him high or hang him low. But never return till the day I learn he's gone in flames below. Or you'll hang with the great scarecrow. Scarecrow, 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 scarecrow. The soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow, 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 scarecrow. The country folk all loved him just the same. Scarecrow, he would always help the farmer when there was no gold to bring. He'd find a way for the poor to pay the taxes of the king. Scarecrow, every man would sing. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. The soldiers of the king feared his name. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. The country folk all loved him just the same. Scarecrow, Scarecrow, Scarecrow. I tell you, I will not tolerate your troops burning cottages on my land. Why not? Because the people here are my people, General Pugh. My family have been squires of Dimchurch for 200 years. I'm acting under orders that you're under two to maintain the law. You're justice of the peace. Peace, yes. And you've brought war here. This is a war against time. Offering a reward for the capture of the scarecrow fellow who leads this rabble has been useless. Yes, and so will be burning, terrorizing. My people hate you. All right. I'll make a bargain with you. Hmm? I'll call off my men if you'll help me try another way. Yes? Well? Now then. The Marsh people share equally the proceeds of these smuggling runs. That's the story, is it not? So, you're the squire here. Who among your tenants has been behind in his rents and then paid up recently? Suddenly? Inexplicably, perhaps. Well? Yes, I see what you're getting at. I'll go through my accounts. Yes, do that. 
Give me the names and get the fellows round to your house for questioning. They won't suspect anything if you ask them there. Then you leave them to me. There's one that comes to mind. You might make a start with him. Uh-huh. A difficult fellow. Bad farmer to a widower with two sons and an old mother he treats none too well. Ransley's the name. Right. He'll do for one. Send for him. Very well. You'll be round at my house tomorrow morning. But stop this burning, do you hear? Yes, sir, sir. Come in. Sir Thomas sent for me. Joe Ramsley. This way. I'll show him in, William. Hello, Ramsley. Morning, Master John. What does Sir Thomas want to see me for? I don't know. It isn't my father anyway. Come on. Come in. Joe Ramsley, sir. Morning, sir. Joseph Ransley, North Farm, Bonington. You're not much of a farmer, are you? Three years of bad harvests. The sheep flock down to 60 head. It's poor lamb, sir. I do my best. But you've stayed on it. You got six months behind with your rent and suddenly paid it. And you've been paying it ever since. Yes, sir. Well, I... Uh... How? I've been selling off some of my sheep, sir. <laughs> sir Thomas never questioned it, sir. No? Well, I do. I don't think you sold your sheep, Ransley. I think you're a smuggler. A smuggler? I'm an honest man, sir. Yes. You suddenly raised money from selling sheep. Where? To whom? Prove it with dates and bills of sale. I don't keep no bills, sir. Don't try lying to me, Ransley. You're paid with smuggler's gold. You know who I'm after. The man who leads you, pays you off. I don't know what you mean, sir. Oh, yes, you do. And I'll give you a simple choice. I'll throw you into jail on suspicion and I'll keep you there for questioning until you rot. Oh, jail, yes, sir. Finish. Or you'll turn King's evidence. Tell me all you know about the Scarecrow smuggling gang. Their movements, where they meet and when. Nobody will know you talk, Ransley, but it's you or them. I don't know nothing, sir. I swear I don't know. They're under arrest. No, no, wait, sir, wait. Well? I said I don't know nothing, sir, and I don't. But I may be able to find out, sir. I'd try if you'd give me a little time, sir. I'll give you 48 hours. You'll either come forward with the names of the men you know to be in this madman's gang, these so-called gentlemen of the marshes, or you can rot in jail. You've got 48 hours, Ramsey, you understand? Now get out. Yes, sir. I'll find out all I can, sir. You'd better. Well, that's what I heard, sir. And one trait is enough to get you hanged. The rest of us as well. Mm. And there's a shipment due from France tomorrow. Uh, General Pugh is staying at your father's, you say? <laughs> your head's really in the last.